so the first bill on the agenda, I think we're going to be, we might be taking these in the reverse order that they were posted online. The first bill is House File 313. Both bills are uh, Chair Lee's bills. So this is, uh, this is Lee Day in the Preventive Health Policy Division. Um, welcome to the committee, Chair Lee. So I will move to, re the first bill is House File 13. Uh, dealing with Alzheimer's disease. I will move to re-refer House File 315 to the Health, Finance, and Policy Division. And I understand you will have a DE1 amendment uh, that would put the bill in the shape you would like. Would you like me to move that first? Yes, please, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, I will move the DE1 amendment to get the bill in the shape the author would like. Is there any discussion to the amendment? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, sorry, I have a cat. Uh. Um, uh, okay, opposed. Please say no. Okay, uh, the amendment is adopted. The bill is in the shape you would like. Uh, Chair Lee, please uh, present your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, committee members. Uh, the uh, amendment that we just adopted just clarifies the goals and the uh, deliverables for the Minnesota Department of Health and creating the uh, Alzheimer's Public Information Program. Uh, additionally, it provides more direction to MDH regarding consultation with some of the uh, targeted uh, cultural communities that we want to uh, for them to take a look at and to ask uh, MDH to make materials available online at no additional cost to local and co uh, county public health and provides that any uh, funds remaining should be used to implement uh, an initial statewide public information campaign using the materials that they develop and also requires a report on and where the funds will be appropriated. And uh, Mr. Chair and members, I really uh, just wanna say thank you to all of my co-authors from uh, both sides of the aisles and uh, acknowledging the ser seriousness of this issue and you know, really uh, providing for this program, which uh, will uh, have 250,000 in, in funds to the uh, Department of Health to develop a focused public awareness campaign uh, with culturally specific messages about the importance of early detection and diagnosis awareness of uh, Alzheimer's disease and other dementia and uh, discussing some of the uh, kind of mission with a uh, health provider. Uh, I do have some testifiers here that may be able to uh, uh, speak a little bit more, namely uh, the Alzheimer's Association and uh, they have some constituents who can come by and uh, talk about why this is important for them. And so right now, Mr. Chair, I'd like to turn it over before questions. Thank you, Chair Lee. Uh, Representative Heinzman, we, did you have a question like about the amendment before we get to public testimony or did you just want to get on the list for after testimonies concluded? Uh, I, I did have a question about the amendment, Mr. Chair. Just a process question. Did we get a description of the amendment before or after we voted on it? Uh, I, well, I believe it was, af you know, it was, it's fairly standard practice just to allow uh, members to put, uh, to offer amendments to put bills in the shape they would like. I did ask uh, if members had any questions regarding it and nobody requested a description of it, but uh, Rep. Chair Lee did describe the bill as amended. In the Mr. Chair. Representative Heinzman. If possible, maybe it'd be um, something we could consider in the future that we get the description of the amendment before we voted. That's all, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Heinzman. So I do have a few people who have who are on the list to testify. I believe first is Josh Nay. Josh, are you here? I am. Apologies, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, my name is Josh Nye, and I'm the manager of state affairs at the Alzheimer's Association. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about our support for HF 313. Thank you to Representative Lee for introducing this bill and to the bipartisan co-authors on the committee for your support. 99,000 Minnesotans live with Alzheimer's disease, and we estimate that number will increase to 120,000 by the year 2025. Two thirds of those living with Alzheimer's are women, black or African Americans are twice as likely, and Hispanic or Latinx Americans are one and a half times more likely to develop Alzheimer's, but are less likely to get diagnosed than older whites. And according to data released just yesterday by the Alzheimer's Association relative to uh, racial and uh, ethnic attitudes around Alzheimer's, more than half of non-white Americans believe significant loss of memory or cognitive abilities is a normal part of aging. And more than one, thir and more than one third of Native Americans and nearly three in 10 Hispanics 
do not believe they will live long enough to develop Alzheimer's or another dementia. Common misconceptions, fear, and stigma around dementia exist, which is why in part uh, public awareness, which is why in part public awareness is so important. And I should clarify, Alzheimer's disease and dementia is not a normal part of aging, and it can impact those under the age of 65. Quality care for people with Alzheimer's disease and other dementia starts with an early documented and disclosed diagnosis. However, only about half of those with Alzheimer's have actually been diagnosed. Among those seniors who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, only 33% are even aware that they have the disease. Early detection and a formal diagnosis allows people living with dementia to have access to available interventions, build a care team, participate in support services, and potentially enroll in clinical trials. 95% of those with dementia have other chronic conditions, including diabetes and hypertension, and a diagnosis that includes care planning for these conditions saves people with dementia and their caregivers from having to travel and pay for unnecessary hospital visits or trips to the emergency room. Alzheimer's disease is the most expensive disease in America. The average annual per person Medicaid cost for someone without dementia is $374 versus $8,779 for someone with dementia. That means that a person with dementia costs Medicaid 23 times more than a person with dementia or without dementia, excuse me. In 2020, Minnesota through medical assistance spent $905 million on supporting those with dementia. And that cost is expected to increase by 20% in the next four years. But, also, but the Alzheimer's Association ran a financial model that shows we could reduce lifetime per person health, per health, uh, lifetime per person health and long-term care costs by as much as 15% or $64,000 just by diagnosing Alzheimer's earlier. Primary and long-term care costs are lower in people with, with diagnosed and managed mild cognitive impairment or dementia. Over the past half century, public health has provided leadership on the need for a diagnosis disclosure with other difficult conditions. Through public health education efforts and advocacy, Healthcare providers are much more open and honest discussing difficult diagnoses like cancer or HIV AIDS and relaying the impact of their diagnosis with care and understanding. We are seeking the same with Alzheimer's disease. Minnesotans must feel comfortable discussing symptoms and concerns with their healthcare provider. This requires addressing barriers, including low public awareness of the early warning signs of dementia, as well as the emotional distress and misconceptions about the disease. By making this investment to promote early detection and diagnosis, you can show Minnesotans that living with dementia can mean a more actively engaged life, a higher quality of life, and significantly reduced costs for health and social care. We ask the committee to pass HF 313 as amended. And Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, one of our um, Alzheimer's advocates, Lindsay Hilmer, who's on the list to testify, was unable to join us this morning uh, but I wanted to share her story and her grandmother's Alzheimer's journey with the committee. It's it's very brief, much briefer than my comments. Um, sure, sure. But I think it's important. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, my name is Lindsay Hilmer, and I am from Alexandria, Minnesota. I grew up with my grandmother, Betty, who had Alzheimer's. My family did not have a history of anyone having any form of dementia or Alzheimer's. Betty was a widow and lived alone for 20 years. She was very active in bowling, gardening, art, and working. When Betty started forgetting appointments or birthdays, we assumed it was, an, it was the normal part of the aging process. We figured that she's very independent, stubborn, and kept, very, uh, kept a very busy schedule. When Betty's undiagnosed Alzheimer's progressed, where we feared for her safety, we sought out answers as a family. My dad grew up only ever hearing of people being senile, but no, no one in our group of neighbors, friends, or family had ever heard, uh, had ever had to deal with something like this. Had we known to recognize the signs of Alzheimer's and how it differs from the normal aging process, my grandma and my family would have been better prepared. It wasn't until Betty was in a, uh, in a full care Alzheimer's unit at the Glenwood, Minnesota nursing home that we really started to understand this disease. Betty fought this disease for 20 plus years. I share this story with you because I was robbed of my grandmother for nearly 20 years by Alzheimer's disease, time where I should have been uh, sharing my love of antiques, thrifting, painting, and gardening. 
all the things that my grandma loved. Instead, I had to learn empathy, patience, understanding. I had to learn how to comfort my crying grandmother when she told me the other kids were being mean to her or that she failed a test in school. I had to believe for her sake that the stuffed animals in her room were real. I had to watch my grandmother reverse roles, reverse roles with me. That's why the Alzheimer's Association is working to pass House File 313, which would provide funds to the Minnesota Department of Health to establish a public awareness campaign around dementia and Alzheimer's disease and the importance of early detection and diagnosis. Please support House File 313 to provide awareness of the signs of dementia, to help reduce, uh, reduce stigma of the disease, and to encourage Minnesotans to have conversations about cognitive health with their health care providers. Thank you, Lindsay Homer. And with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Homer. Uh, next, the testifier who has signed up is Mary Margaret Lehman. Welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Do you am I? Do you see me? Am I there? I don't see you, but I hear you. Okay. Let's see here. I don't know why. I I can see you too, so that's good. In the Mr. lower Chair. left of your screen, there might be a start video button. Okay. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Here there. We go. Now I okay. Good. Thank you. Mr. Chair, my name is Mary Margaret Lehman. I'm a caregiver for my husband, Ken, who is now 83 years old. It took 15 years and nine physicians for my husband, Ken, to receive a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Two internists, two geriatricians, three neurologists, and one neuropsychologist. One geriatrician, uh, fleetingly suggested Alzheimer's and told us to come back in a year. I thought, how could this doctor even consider Alzheimer's? Ken had no memory issues. My father, my uncle, Ken's father all had Alzheimer's. They all had memory issues. Wasn't memory the hallmark of Alzheimer's? I began to observe changes in Ken in 1995. He was 58 and we were living in California. Most concerning were his problem solving, judgment, and reasoning, particularly in regard to our finances, especially paying bills and taxes. Ultimately, more mis financial missteps resulted in bankruptcy and losing our home. We moved to Minneapolis and lived with our loving daughter and family for six months. A friend suggested we call the Alzheimer's Association Helpline I now refer to it as my lifeline. Through the Minnesota North Dakota Alzheimer's Association, we were able to find a wonderful team of doctors who after thorough neuropsychological testing diagnosed Ken with Alzheimer's. Ken and I learned problem solving, reasoning and judgment are warning signs of Alzheimer's. We learned there are actually 10 signs of Alzheimer's that one person with Alzheimer's is one person with Alzheimer's. We committed to become advocates and educators with many other amazing volunteers from the Minnesota Alzheimer's Association to share our stories, the importance of early detection and the latest research on brain healthy living and the importance that persons living with dementia know that they are always cherished and always loved. But we need your help. The Minnesota North Dakota Alzheimer's Association needs your help. We are asking for a funding for statewide dementia public awareness campaign to give hope and support to the anticipated 150,000 persons living with dementia in Minnesota by the year 2025 so that we will all know everyone in Minnesota is walking beside us and we are not alone. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Um, that is all the people I've had who've signed up to testify. Is there anybody else who would like to testify on this bill? Okay, seeing none, seeing no hands. Uh, I will turn to member discussion. Representative Bierman. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Lee, for bringing the bill forward. Uh, it is uh, an area that uh, we do need more discussion in public about the, uh, uh, the issue of Alzheimer's and the growing numbers coming uh, amplifies that uh, to get people the help and support they need. Uh, one, I did have a question for um, Mr. Nye, if he's available, to discuss just briefly the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, Mr. Nye. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative. Uh, great question. So Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. It's the most common form of dementia. Um, think of dementia as kind of an umbrella term. There are different types of dementia. Um, uh, uh, um, Alzheimer's is the most common form. Uh, dementia is really a, uh, um, a grouping of symptoms. And so uh, depending on um, if you have Alzheimer's, Lewy body uh, dementia, front temporal uh, dementia, um, it all impacts uh, the brain a little bit differently. Um, but Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. Representative Beerman. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, and then just to follow up for uh, Mr. Nye, you did mention the, the difference in the ratio of genders for this. And I wondered if you could comment on uh, the numbers you're seeing of younger people afflicted with dementia or Alzheimer's. Mr. Nye. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative. Uh, uh, another great question. We are, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, people under the age of 65, as I mentioned, are being diagnosed with what's called younger onset, also known as early onset Alzheimer's. Um, and this, uh, um, the symptoms uh, uh, for, for, for this start um, as early as early 40s. I know of, um, uh, of uh, one of your former colleagues who, um, who shared um, uh, a family member's journey where they were diagnosed in their early 40s with younger onset. Um, nationwide, there's about 200,000 Americans living with what's called younger onset, but that number is also increasing. Representative Beerman. Mr. Chair, Mr. Knight, thank you for the, the answers, and I, I recommend uh, positive uh, votes by everybody for this bill because we need more uh, discussion, more information, more access to services for people, and I think that it's need more understanding about the results that uh, people are affected with, with early onset, with Alzheimer's at any age, and just a better understanding among the public at large about what it is and what the treatment is and get the help they need sooner. Thank you for bringing the bill. Thank you, Representative Beerman. Is there any additional member discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, uh, any closing remarks, uh, Representative Lee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members for, for signing on. And like I have mentioned before, you know, to the bipartisan authors on the bill, and I would just share a little bit about, you know, uh, why this is important for me and uh, uh, talking with Mr. Nye, who is a, a constituent of mine and discussing this proposal before, uh, you know, I, I share with him the experience that I'm going through right now with my 76 uh, year old father, where uh, you know, one of the strongest person that I, I've known growing up, you know, similar to the story that he shared and uh, just seeing, you know, cognitively, my dad has taken a step back. And so in trying to figure out the best kind of care for him right now, I, I know that there's a lack of information out there. And so what we're doing right here and, you know, with the support, the legislature is really getting out on the forefront so that we can have materials for families who are going through a similar situation like mine and, uh, and thank you to uh, Miss uh, Mar uh, Mary Margaret uh, Lehman for sharing her story, you know, that she is going through too. And so I just wanted to, you know, just share a little bit about that and why it's important for me and why I, uh, you know, urge members of, of the committee to support this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Lee. I appreciate your commitment to this issue. It's affected all, uh, many of us, probably all of us. Uh, so with that, I will renew my motion to re-refer House File 313 as amended to the Health Finance and Policy Division. The clerk will take the roll. Representative Freiberg. Yes. Representative Bierman. Yes. Representative Grunhagen. Aye. Representative Aikum. Aye. Representative Agbaje. Aye. Representative Ackland. Yes. Representative Carlson. Carlson, yes. Representative Franzen. Franzen, yes. Representative Heinzman. Yes. Representative Morrison. 
Morrison, aye. Representative Pryor. Aye. Motion passes, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Somick. Uh, your bill is on its way, Representative Lee. 